<coughs> Last week, uh, we talked about multiplying, rational, multiplying and dividing rational expressions, so fractions with variables. Well, if we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing, we probably, it seems logical to talk about adding and subtracting. So we're going to kind of go there today. Again, we're looking at rational expressions, which are fractions with variables. So that means if we can add fractions with no variables, then the process is hopefully going to be pretty much the same. We're going to try to translate it over. So if I want to add one-fourth, this is problem number one. If I want to add one-fourth to two-thirds, how do I do that? You get a common denominator. <coughs> so what's the smallest number that both four and three go into evenly? One. Someone said it. Four goes into 12, and three goes into 12. And 12 is, in fact, the smallest number that this works for. You could pick larger numbers, but that's just going to mean more stuff going on, which is more complicated. Why do that to yourself? Okay. There's adding in between. So I need to rewrite one-fourth in terms of something over 12. Well, the easiest way to do that is to think if I have one-fourth, what did I have to multiply one four by to get to twelve? Three. Okay, so if I multiply four by three, I'm going to multiply the top by that same thing. <coughs> so this should be three <coughs> over twelve. Okay, if I had two thirds, what did I have to multiply three by to get to twelve? Three. So I multiply the bottom, I'll multiply the top. Again, I'm keeping this fraction more or less balanced. Seven over so four times two is eight. So this really is 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths, which is what over 12? What? 11 over 12. Once the denominators are the same, then the answer has the same denominator, and we add the numerators, or subtract if we need to. Get the denominators to be the same, make one fraction, and add across the top. Is the next one 1 over 24? The next one is exactly 1 over 24. Yes. So the next one, again, in the same line of thought, we're looking for the smallest number that both 8 and 6, and six go into evenly. One strategy you can always use if you're stuck is you can just multiply the two numbers together. Um, but that won't always give you the least common denominator or the smallest number possible. So in the case of 8 and 6, you could multiply and you get 48, but as some of you said, there is a smaller number. In fact, it's 24, I believe, right? and it's subtraction. So what times 8 is 24? Three. So then we multiply the top by 3 as well. 7 times 3 is 21. Um, 5 or 6. What times 6 is 24? So we multiply the bottom by 4 and multiply the top by 4. So that's 20. Now that they have the same denominator, our answer has that same denominator, and then we subtract. In this case, 21 minus 20 is 1. Okay. That same process we're going to use even if there's variables, which is exactly how we're going to add, subtract, rational expressions. To do that, we need to figure out what we're finding down here is the least common denominator. Sometimes it's called the least common multiple. You may see that as well, LCM, there's other terminology. I believe the book uses LCD. These are the same things. This is specific to fractions, though. What is our algebra? Are we going to do it with the algebra? Yes, we will. That's right. We are going to right. okay. We're going to find the least common multiple. It's the smallest number that two values divide into evenly. In the example up there, the least common denominator, well, at least in this case, least common multiple between 4 and 3, that was 12. 12 is the smallest number that both 4 and 3 go into evenly. We add and subtract rational expressions. It's the same three steps that we did up here. First, we're going to rewrite. Each fraction, 
I'm going to use this language. In terms of the least common denominator, <coughs> that means get the, get the denominators to be the same. To be equal. That's what I mean by number one there. Two, add, subtract, across, numerator, and keep the denominator, the LCD. Again, just like we did in the warm up, once we found out the bottom is 12, then the answer is going to be 12 in the denominator. And lastly, simplify if possible. Once you've added subtracted, if you can simplify more, if you can uh, do this, some of the things we did yesterday and last week, or sorry, last week and um, in the first half of chapter 12, then do so. A lot of times there won't be much to do other than just circle your answer. Okay, so these problems aren't that bad if the denominator starts the same. So the first two are relatively easy examples. Um, what's the LCD of these two things? What's the smallest number of both that x plus 2 and x plus 2 goes into? Just itself. <coughs> okay. We rewrote it in terms of LCD. It's already done for us. We'll add or subtract going across and keep the LCD. Well, we've kept the LCD here. So add or subtract going across. It's adding in this case, so 2x plus. Um, whenever I see groups here, I'm going to put them in parentheses just because I'm paranoid. I might screw something up. Uh, when you're adding, you can add in any order. So once you've, if you got an addition sign here, this it really isn't necessary to put the parentheses. But it can be nice. It's pretty nice when you have subtraction. Anyways, what's 2x plus x plus 1? Three x plus one over x plus two. Um, please do not do the following step. Please do not say, "Oh, there's an x there, and there's an x there, and I crossed them out." That's not a good step. Two x plus one x. Um, please don't try to cross these two x's out. The reason behind that is that these this is actually a full uh, factor here. So if you want to cancel something in this group because if there's an addition sign connecting it, you better be able to cross out the entire thing. You've got to find an x plus 2 on top. Or conversely, you've got to find a 3x plus 1 on bottom somewhere. In this case, I don't think you're going to find it. There's nothing to factor, so you'd be done here. <clears throat> Same thing here. I'm going to put some parentheses around these guys just for safekeeping. What's the LCD of 5x and 5x? Yeah, they're the same. So not much work to do there. Okay. So that means I have 4x plus 1 minus x plus 3. <coughs> you have a minus to this group. One strategy we've seen all year is you can plus and then distribute a minus to each of those. That's the main reason why I put parentheses, so I don't forget to do that. Boy, is it But it used to be x plus 3, but I distributed a minus to it, so it's now minus x and minus 3. Okay, so what's 4x plus min, uh, minus x? What's 1 plus minus 3? <coughs> and again, for the same reason, if you want to put parentheses on your final answer, you can. That hopefully will help remind you that since this and that aren't alike, as a group, then I can't just start casting things out. Okay, those are the easy ones. <clears throat> the more uh, uh, challenging might be a word, um, the, well, frankly, the new ones 
we're going to do that's uh, kind of the point here is what if they don't have the same denominator? Um, in this case, notice they're separated by these expressions are separated by commas because the directions simply just tell you to figure out what the LCD is. So I want to find the smallest number that 12x goes into evenly and 4x squared goes into evenly. This is how I handle monomials. I actually think these guys are easier than these. Than these. And I'll show you why I think that in a second. Um, I'm going to handle the coefficients separately from the variables. And I'll worry about the variables in a second. So I'm going to worry about the coefficients here. What's the smallest number that 12 and 4 go into evenly? 12. 12 certainly goes into itself, and 4 goes into 12. So our LCD is going to have a factor of 12. So now I need to compare x and x squared. So the, the line of questioning would be, what, what's the smallest number that x and x squared go into evenly? <clears throat> two prime candidates would either be x or x squared. Those would be two really great first guesses. Um, so if you chose x, um, does x go into x? Yeah. Does x squared go into x to the first? No, x squared is too big. It doesn't fit into just one x. So we got to throw out the x. How about the other way around? Um, does x go into x squared? Yeah. yeah. Does x squared go into itself? <coughs> yeah, everything does. So from the variables, we're going to pull an x squared. In general terms, if you have the same base, then we're going to pick the exponent with the mo with the highest. <laughs> we're going to pick the variable with the highest exponent. If we're uh, in terms of the LCD here, <clears throat> I'll try one more this time to make this very little bit more complicated. And you can add this one in if you want as a fourth example. How about? Um, Sixteen x squared y to the third. Oh man, I'm gonna throw two variables at you. And how about eight x to the third y? Hey, okay, this is a new problem that I just made up. And since we're only finding the LCD, what's on top doesn't matter. How about one and three? I don't care about this. I only want to look at the bottom for the LCD. So I have my new problem here. We're going to look at this one step at a time. <clears throat> What's the smallest number that both 8 and 16 go into evenly? 16. Okay. What's the smallest number that both x squared and x to the third go into evenly? It's whatever the base is and the highest exponent we see. How about y to the third and y? Y to the third. Variables are getting a little bit easier than the coefficients, just <laughs> the way they have them to be. When we get now factors here that are binomials, um, I think life actually, it may look worse, but I think it's actually easier. I'm going to jump to the third example here first, and we'll come back to this guy. Um, so let's see. I want to find the LCD of x minus 8 and x plus 1. Um, if you have two, uh, two factors that, are, that uh, share nothing in common, you know, this group, this x, this, there's no x minus 8s over here. There's no x plus 1s over here. Then what do we say was probably the, was the easiest way to come up with the least common multiple? What's one something that always works of coming up with something? That's for GCD. That's for greatest common divisor. That's the number that goes into them. What do we do like in example 1 where we had 4 and 3? Nothing, nothing is the, in shared between a 4 and a 3. So what do you do to find the at least common multiple? How'd you find the smallest number that both 4 and 3 goes into evenly? What's one easy way to do it? That always works. 
Multiply. Multiply them together. Yes, I'm sorry if I didn't hear you. If they don't share a common factor in common, then just multiply them together. So in the case of this guy, where x minus 8 and x plus 1 don't share anything in common, the least common multiple is just multiply them together. Is that okay? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's how awesome it is. That's why I think it's easier this way. It, it may look maybe on the surface more complex, but if you understand what's going on, it's actually way easier. Okay. Um, same thing's going on over here. Oh, boy. I don't even know what multiplies up to make this. So I better figure that out. And how do you figure out, how do we, de how do we decide what multiplies together to make this? What's something you could do? The box and diamond? Yeah. Do we remember what that what that like whole like idea was called? Bingo. So we'll factor it and one strategy we've hopefully most of you are comfortable with by this point of the course is box and diamond fa factoring. So I'm gonna turn this into something multiplied together. I'll factor it. If you box a diamond, you get negative 6x squared, negative 1x. What two numbers multiply negative 6, add up to negative 1? Negative 3, positive 2. The negative six or eight. There? Here? Here? So <clears throat> when we factor it, we get x minus 3 and x plus 2. So this thing is really x plus 2 times x minus 3. This thing is x plus 2 squared. So I'm going to look at all the different bases, and I'm going to combine them together into a form where I hit everything the most amount of times I need to. So in this case, um, what are the different factors that I see? There's an x plus 2, and there's an x minus 3 are the different things that I see. X minus 3 is... So what's the most x minus 3s that we have? Just one of them. What's the most x plus 2s that we have? Two of them. So our LCD better have two of them, because this one has two. Okay. <coughs> Finding the least common denominator is pretty much the only new skill that we're going to need. And it shouldn't really be new so much as just kind of refresher from a long time ago. It is. Well, on the surface it is, because there's a lot more letters and there's a lot of things running around. But in terms of like what you're actually doing, it's really not any different. It's just there's new letters. It looks worse, but if you understand what you're trying to get accomplished, it's pretty much just the same thing you've been doing. Just more of it. Okay. If you buy if you buy that. Maybe you don't. Okay. Let's try to actually add some things that don't have common denominators already. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the least common denominator is. So what is, in our first guy here, what is the smallest number of both 2x and 5x to the fourth going to evenly? So like we did in the front side, let's worry about the coefficients first. What's the smallest number of 2 and 5 going to evenly? Okay. And what's the smallest number that x and x to the fourth go into evenly? X to the fourth. X to the fourth. The hard part's, the, really the hardest part's over with. So I want to rewrite <coughs> this in terms of 10x to the fourth. What do you need to multiply 2x by to make it 10x to the fourth? 
What's this missing that I need here? I need a 5 and, and an x to the third. So on the top, I'll get a 5 and x to the third. How about over on this side? We have a 5, starts with a 5x to the fourth. What did the bottom need to make it 10x to the fourth? What do I need to multiply this by to make it the LCD? A 2. Um, what do I need? To, do I need anything for to go from x to the fourth to x to the fourth? No. So all I really need, all that's really missing is the 2 here. <clears throat> okay, so that gives us, let's simplify the bottom. The bottoms here both better be 10x to the 4th. And what's the top? What's 5 times x to the 3rd times 3? Um, what's 7 times 2? 14. And then it's add. So our final step said same denominator and add the things across. Can I cross off these x's or the 15 and the 10? Please say no. If I want to do any canceling out or crossing off, I need to be able to factor out something on top. Is there anything in common here? Not really. So that's the best we got. Um, we'll finish the next two tomorrow.